Got straight to the dome, so that's not helpful for him. But Flit has dropped the bomb carrier, so that's all the information they need. He has squeezed out a second frag as well. Four versus two as versus Pro try to take the pick of their opponent, Phase Clan. They'll take the pissed around at the very least. And that is certainly a nice way to start the proceedings. The B bomb site will not be compromised by Phase Clan today. Or yesterday, Absolutely as, not. Know, in the previous round. So the water bug was fixed just before the major started. As uh, there was an issue where if people entered this water area, you could hear it from various places around the map. And that mm. proved to be uh, an issue for for longer than you, than you might have liked. But one thing that can be a problem when you're trying to fix a pr an issue in a game such as this is that you have to figure out what's causing that problem in the first place. And that can be half the issue. We've got one player who needs to reconnect to the server. And I'm, I'm glad we're going to see some Ancient at the Major because I feel like whenever a, a, a new map comes in with a different layout, people are all the grenades. Like back in the day, and you, he would have to throw the first one in mid. But if someone else could do that, then you could do so much more with that guy who knows all the grenades. Yeah. But now you can drop him all the grenades. So there we go. So this, this side of the donut, for example, you can, um, you can smoke off as the T's enter the, you know, towards A. So that can be quite useful as they go towards A main and so on. Um, these are very useful grenades, guys. These are very useful grenades. Somebody make a For Idiots guide. Thank you. Maybe I'll do it. Counter-Strike for dummies. Well, it's it's interesting. You know, it's a new map. It's... There's often the case, you know, often a lot of edges for the teams that understand how to innovate. So, whenever anything new comes about, there's like such a good opportunity for edges and advantages in that sense. But as we go into your rounds two, you can see that it is largely a save. We've got Carrigan who's invested. He's got that scout. Scout's pretty dangerous. I love a good scout pushing in from B main, trying to get into that, uh, the A main, sorry, trying to get into the site. And Kika is going to have to smoke things off here. That scout is quite problematic. Rain's taking down your Kindar, and that might actually change the complexion of this round. You can see they're falling back now. Oh and dear. Rain's picked up another one with the M4. Uh oh. Man, like Rain. It's a nice elevation peak there. Can change his elevation and be quite a nuisance. So we've got a five versus three. And they're all naked. They are butt naked. They're nudists. Naked nudists here. Four remaining now, so that could help Virtus Pro cut the numbers quickly if they can find the connections in the first place. The bomb has fallen at the hands of uh, Twist, at the feet of Jane. Kika still with that MP5. Very interesting choice over the MP7. Basically a worse gun outside of the silenced part of it, so it has no traces also. So if you are looking to spam smokes, then it can be quite useful, of course. Maybe that is the case here. 30 seconds for more damage to be done. You can see Rain showing some presence, trying to run distraction as his team creep towards the bomb site. Yeah, such a winnable round. Rain already with three kills. Defense here. Oh, another one now for Brokey. The swing onto Kika. He'll be holding this one down with the MP5, but Rain picks up his fourth kill. Wow, that's crazy. He started the round with the Glock, James. Picks up a headshot, picks up the M4, and then proceeds to kill three more players. That's... That's not what you want if you're yeah. this pro. And um, oh, there it is. FaZe have played six maps of this recently, versus the one for versus pro, and uh, I do, I do wonder how more prepared FaZe Clan may be, at least in in the recent months. But we shall see. Maybe that's a little clue. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see how they play the advantages, because that's another big sign as to how well a team knows a map is how kind of tight their play is the when nuance. they get into the lead and their understanding as to how to exploit that and convert it into the round win. That's such a big deal. And you can see Key Kurt having himself a donut. And right now, you know, FaZe needs to, of course, <laughs> avoid what they just did to VP, which is a surprising round victory off of the pistols. And there's lots of close ranges and corners and 50-50 angles on this map to worry about. And right now we get the grouping around A main and A hall. So look to try to push into that A site. And this is 
it's quite a good approach because you can kind of keep your back to the wall. It's kind of reminiscent of Overpass A long, how you can kind of just uh, run up all the way and then you have to worry about a few positions. So it's a good anti-eco protocol. You take out a lot of those 50-50s and those cubbies and corners. You don't have to worry about them as much if you approach from main main and hall. Ouch. Yeah, I don't know that he retrieves that gun though, but uh, it's nice to do some damage. You can see Flit creeping through the temple now, but um, I don't expect much more to be done. But they don't have much to lose either. There's no SMGs or anything, so they may not be concerned um, with the kill bonus here for FaZe Clan, and we'll try to just make it more expensive for them. See Buster trying to wide swing the Deagle, but there's only so much he can do. I recently, semi-recently, went to the uh, the area in Mexico that in inspired the aesthetic of this map. Oh, where about pretty that? cool, like Chichen Itza. Um, with is that near Cancun? Temples. It is a few hours, I want to say, west from Cancun. Hmm. Yeah. I was going to say, this, this map is reminiscent to me of Aztec. It's like the closest thing to Aztec that's not Aztec that we have. The area is, is, is pretty awesome. I was blessed by a Mayan shaman, shaman. I also had shaman. to pay like $100 for some little statue. And I was showing it to uh, a bunch of the casters on a video call. And I dropped it and it broke. <laughs> oh God. So maybe I'm not blessed, it, blessed anymore. Yeah. So you, you're cursed now. Yeah. <laughs> you are cursed. Who knows what the curse is going to do to you. But. That was most unfortunate. You need to be blessed. You need to go back to the same shaman and get get blessed again. I think the same thing will happen again. Oh, no, he was trying to do me for like $300 for some giant statue. You but got uh, you got to pay more money now <laughs> yeah. to get blessed and uh, yeah. to avoid the bad energy. But uh, James on that solo AWP in this round. I'd be curious to see if he can find value from that. He is currently hanging out at the back of the A site. And he's got some support with him. And I like this positioning because, again, we've isolated that. So far, phase. their protocol is a hall, a main, that approach towards the site. Again, there's there's a lot of good reasons as to why that makes sense in an anti-eco. You don't have to worry about as many positions. Everybody, you can play together much more easily. Yeah, Rain's doing that cube smoke I was talking about earlier on. And they are lining up. Don't not smoke, cube smoke, whichever you prefer. Jane with a flick. He somehow manages to escape as well. Can we set the situation? Looking for a quick one there, but Olaf Meister has a superior angle and is fast. So the AWP's been lost for now, but maybe Yakindar can do something about that one versus three. The CZ still a very dangerous weapon. And I don't think they heard him running through that Molotov, but now I don't know exactly where he is. He tries to create some space to collect that AWP, but uh, they are waiting for him. He is being closed in on. Got to be careful, though. Don't want to throw it around chasing this AWP too much. Because we know what can happen when that uh, arises. I don't think he's going anywhere. He's yeah. trapped. He's got to try and get oh. a frag. All of my... <laughs> oh, that's <laughs> an awkward time to pull out a weapon. 3-1 yeah. for face clan. Yeah, and actually, quite surprisingly, they deal really well with that that setup. That A setup looked pretty good. Because, again, you can have anti-eco protocols and so on in certain rounds, or like approaches to rounds that are really effective against that. But if the other team knows the, the way that you play those rounds, obviously they can just, like, presumably you know, stack against it. And then suddenly it's not nearly as good. And in this particular example, we had it be the case that Virtus Pro expected that play. But still, it was not a good look for VP, ultimately. Back into the buy round we go, though. And we get some initial smokes around the mids area. Oh, Carrigan just around ramp, dealing with Buster. That's an early four versus four in yeah. favor of FaZe. Bombsite will be controlled, though, as the trade frag is there. But they have to um, be aware of the, the halls, the dig area. That'll be a concern. Flit is focused on that at the moment. But with four players, Virtus Pro will feel stretched a little thin. Mid smoked off earlier from T spawn. I don't know if James is aware of uh, what is safe and what isn't in the mid position, but A may be abandoned soon. We can see Kika falling back. He has the AWP, so he can take a very deep angle in certain directions, but it seems it will be a full commit towards the A bomb site. Yikindar and Co. confident in their estimations. Yeah, they stacked it basically at this point. They're gambling on it, James. But that's a good gamble because here comes v uh, here comes FaZe. Yeah, they've got 45 seconds, and 
no personnel towards the A bomb site for FaZe Clan, so I don't think you'll see any last minute rotations. But that is quite a late smoke grenade. That's a huge, important frag. And another one from FaZe Clan. The trades will be there when they need it as well, leaving Jamin in one versus three. 30 seconds to plant that bomb. We can see it being planted now as Brokey comes close. James trying to avoid the shot, jumping to try and get legs, but he can't quite get the burst with the CZ and loses everything. 4 1 for FaZe Clan. Do you wonder, are you concerned about VP just yet? Uh, I'm not sure, but so far, you know, FaZe are doing a pretty good job and they're, you know, winning the rounds they're supposed to win, you know, they're converting those anti ecos and. The buy rounds has been good so far, but it's pretty limited sample size. So I think it's a bit too early to be fully in concerns for Virtus Pro. I think that, you know, there's also a lot to be proven still by FaZe in terms of their consistency here. They're playing another anti-eco. The question is, will we see the same round as the last two times in terms of that? And previously, it's all about that A main focus. And there's there's two players around, around that position now. You know, two players playing at least... Uh, the tomb, the donuts. I wonder how the eco positions on the CT side will evolve over time. If we remember early on overpass, um, you'd have a lot of just CTs camping on the A bomb site, for example. But of course, that map evolve o evolved over time, and this one probably will as well. Kinder up close with the CZ, some success. And these choke points are so tight, the CZs could prove quite favorable for an ecoing CT. The Buster will opt for a Desert Eagle. CZ slides past him, avoids the flashbang, and uh, nobody's there. But a flank is here from Carrigan. So, Pays Clan look like a well oiled machine in this anti eco on Ancient. Yeah. It's really good to see that they're not, again, just rinse repeat that A approach that they had previously. You have to show at least two different looks on your anti ecos. And they, this is the second one, you know, that finish on the, the B sites. Not really a way to get in here for VP in the remainder. Looking for damage, but FaZe are playing quite disciplined. Counter-Strike at the moment. Not offering really anything to VP. We'll be holding on to what they invested here. And 5-1. But we saw this on the first map. If you, if you recall, I think we got to at least 8-1 before VP started winning some rounds on that first half. So... Let's not count them out just yet. We get the AWP purchased by Jane once again. Org on to Keycut. And I have to say, Brokey's been he's been doing a pretty good job with his AWP so far as well. Been hitting some of those you know, quick shotgun flicks in some key moments. Nays going through on mid mid take coming through from VP. forward position from you, Kenda. He'll hear some, uh, he'll get some echolocation on the smokes being thrown. Oh. But is he aware of Brokey further down? Four versus four versus pro try to stabilize. Some more smokes flying towards the A bomb site. Presence <laughs> being shown by uh, Olaf Meister in the meantime. Karagin just ran up there. <laughs> Fired a few bullets and then ran off again. Oh, Kika. Oh, oh. Oh my god, he's been timing completely. But he might still get a kill out of this. Does Karagan go through? He does and uh, picks off Jame at the same time. It's a 180 oh. just in time. Kika has been there all day long. Doesn't have his angles on point, it must be said. But again, Karagan is uh, very capable of some unusual plays, if you will. Catching Kika off guard. Bomb planter denied. Buster collects the AWP. But again, he is the last man standing. We'll have to slink away with the D-Law as FaZe Clan move to six. It's looking like a dire situation for Virtus Pro at present. That is a very unfortunate situation for, for Key Curse and Virtus Pro. Yeah. <laughs> it was just kind of crazy to see. I mean, firstly, it was a good approach. Sure. Like a, it was a mid retake from FaZe. You know, they move up from split and they get the flash in there. They un Very unfortunate for, I believe it was Yakin or Flit or Yakindo that gets caught jumping up to cat totally flashed and that retake is successful and then with all that map control then carrigan just runs up all the way through house almost into ct spawn shoots a bullet or two and then runs all the way down through donut and then up into spawn again despite there being a player in donut it's just like such a crazy 
like you say, you know, Carrigan is... He's got such a good read of the game, and he's not afraid to take risks, that sometimes, as you say, he's able to put, pull off some really crazy maneuvers. It is, it's reminiscent of yesterday, when he timings Spirit by walking all the way up yeah. through A, finding a timing. This is the kind of player that Carrigan is. I, I mean, I love it. I think he's a fantastic player. Yeah. And uh, once again, it's a save with an AWP for Vadis Pro. Yeah, it's a great style for him because, you know, he, he can take those risks if it doesn't go well. The strongest fraggers remain, and he's dead in Kanaijiol. So it's all good, you know? Yeah. Kicker has one kill at present. I would imagine he will be very frustrated. I know what his face looks like when he's pissed off, but it probably looks like that right now. Six rounds now for FaZe Clan versus Pro on the buy once again. Kicker with the MP9 will be focusing on close quarters engagements, of course. And we'll see if they can turn things around. We've seen him uh, make some more aggressive plays towards B through dig and so on but um hasn't really yielded them much see jane posting up now so i have two players on the a bob site two one two formation for virtus pro to start yes indeed that a main control once again very quickly actually coming through here for phase clan jane is uh he's in a good spot isn't he here at the uh the back of the a site <coughs> to see if phase can Get him off of this angle. There's a quick flash. James going to find oh! it. Oh, he gets, in fact, a collapse off of that. So, yeah, that flash absolutely ineffective. And James has owned it. Phase three versus five now. What on earth do they do to recover? Well, Rain's going to pick off one. That's Flit dead. They've got a minute to work this round now. Shout out to the Sanji stickers on the Kiko MP9. Every MP9 should have Sanji stickers. And or Mac 10. Pull one out for your boy. Versus Pro, currently with a man advantage. This can still change at the hands of Faith Clan, who did pick Ancient if you're joining us late. If you've just got home from work, doing the shopping for your parents, whatever it is. 27 seconds on the clock. Face Clan focused on the A bomb site, but Jame continues to lurk. And Keek uh, has got the right angle on this occasion. Rain looking the wrong way. Olof Meister down as well, leaving Twist to consider his options. Maybe trying to do some little damage in the dying seconds, but Jame will deny him four play survive for Virtus Pro when they get their second round on the board. Yeah, that. That was really key as well, that they prevent Twist from doing any additional economic damage. They survived with four players, so that's going to be extremely important given how they've been getting kind of blitzed so far. So two to six, and the question is, can they, can they string rounds together? Their economy is not in good stead, so they really do need to prevent some economic problems by winning this one. We'll see if they can do that. They get that mid control initially as well. You've got Flit in there as well as your Kindle up on Cat. So, see if they can do some damage from this. Holding this position. Oh, so I think a headshot into Olof Meister there. He's tagged down to 10. Yeah, big focus from on mid from Virtus Pro, changing up their formation, but FaZe Clan weren't focused on mid on this occasion. We've got kills on both sides now as it turns into a 3v3, but Olof Meister and Twist are just one shot away from being face down on the floor. Slowly repositioning together towards that B bomb site. But um, as you can see, Versus Pro are devoid of information and Jame will be left in that dig position, but he's not finding much of anything now as noise has been cut. Again, that water bug is fixed and they've got no idea that FaZe Clan are headed towards the B-bomb site. However, Kicker is starting to push through a main, which will be some more information. And maybe with that early presence in mid, they will read that it's likely at this point to be a B bombsite play. Yakinda looking to rotate now as James is down to the USP. Broke, he's got a decision to make with the bomb being carried. He hasn't heard James scope in again. Not sure if they saw the, the quick switch. So he has a decision to make, and it's a scary one with 29 seconds on the clock. Through the smoke he goes. Molotov's the right, he'll deploy one of his own now as Olaf Meister has got to try and help him plant the bomb. It's not going to be easy for Brokey, but he's got to do it quickly because the net is closing now. 17 seconds. Where does he plant this bomb? 15 seconds. That bomb has to get planted. The flank is here. Kickets on the way. 
Just, oh. just got a gap there. Nine seconds now, and surely they win by timeout. Olaf Meister trying to commit to the bomb plant of fake, but he can't get the gun back out in time. And it will be a third round for Versus Pro, and a very expensive one for FaZe Clan. Yeah, definitely. But they've got a lot of money left to go with, to play with, and similarly for VP, enough to fully buy once again. So an opportunity here for FaZe still exists to reset the economy for Virtus Pro. And we'll see if they're able to, to do that. I'm liking some of the mids dynamics we're getting early on here. Just these like early mid control is important. And it's a fast round, just running it in towards the A site. Here goes FaZe once again. Are there is the response gonna be ready? And it looks like there is a readiness response here to just stop this push. Some counter utility has stuffed it. And now face, you know, they have to they have to presumably retake mid. Or assume assume you know they have to assume that there has been some presence in mid, so now there's the smoke grenade that will cover the sniper's nest and they'll be able to move forward into that mid position. I believe that's Carrigan. He's been very good at these kinds of solo pushes. We mentioned it previously. Oh, he hears the stepping as well. And he's going to take full advantage of that. Carrigan in for an easy frag there in a deep position. When Carrigan's going this deep, you've got real problems. But surely Rain gets picked off here. Indeed, Buster. Here's the sound cues. Stuck in the corner now. I'm not sure if anyone's in position for the usual Molotovs, but a spray will be enough. Versus Pro scrambling for position, but Jame is on the way. The scopes are being heard. That is a very scary jump. But everyone's alive for now. 3v3 as uh, they know at least where Jame is. Not sure if they realize the second player is here. Twist, a little jiggle, little reposition. Olaf Meister down and Twist has got more focuses. He's got more concerns and he walks straight into the reticle. Straight into the reticle of uh, Jame leaving Broke. You know, one versus three lining up for him. Could have been two. He's got more work to do and he doesn't have the angles. Keycut will get a free kill with the scope obscuring his vision. And Virtus Pro get a quick defuse for a fourth round. Huge round, huge round to win for Virtus Pro. Keeping their economy intact, keeping the buys coming in. And the bomb went down, so I'm not actually, I, I believe that we'll still have a full buy, actually. We'll see if I'm I'm right or not, because of course the loss bonus is also increasing at the same time for phase on that T side, but I, and I believe they had some money left over. So I, I think some guesswork here, but they should have a full buy. We'll see in a moment. And man like, man like Freddy Biskov sent me some information about these headsets, which I will retweet yep. later when we are not so busy. Yeah, just shy of the best possible buy, but they're still going to go for it. So that bomb plant did make the difference. Yeah, often does. Virtus Pro, they're being given difficult rounds by FaZe Clan, but maybe they can stabilize somewhat as we... Get more rounds in the bag. Oh, they, they can't buy, actually, if they lose this one still. Yeah, that would be a less than ideal, let's say, Flit in that jungle position now. So far, so good. Not sure how much support he has. That is a huge flashbang. Speaking of support, they both eat it, but they're both live. And Yakinda will help out Flit now. The cavalry is here as that push from Cat comes through. Twist has so many angles to cover, slinking away into the smoke. But advantage versus pro. Man advantage, and they've got control of mid. Somehow Flit is alive. <laughs> <laughs> crazy, crazy flash that came in, as as you said. And we'll get the rotation from phase through to that B site. They've left Olaf Meister in a deep position towards A. So this is really interesting. Do they try to have him be a super late flank to the B site? Or do they try to use him for some pressure to delay rotation? Those are the couple like main ways you would probably use Olaf in this that position. And what's really difficult, there's two orbs that, and right now, Phase the remainder of phase have to walk into the B site. Rain's gonna go down to the first AWP. Buster connects the shots. An awkward approach. Twist. Yeah, it's just so hard to win that peak. And these orbs are causing problems. Great hold on middle from VP. And finally they have they've truly stabilized. Yep, very nice angle with the AWP. Not taking that uh distraction from Olaf Meister on the other side of the of the map. To, con to concede the angle and start to rotate and so on. So ready for the jack in the box. Absolutely ready for it is Buster. Saw the flashbang put Twist in the corner as well. And after that, there's not much Twist can do really. Virtus Pro reduced the gap to one. And now they find themselves in a very promising situation. 
Double Molotovs in mid to stop any advance from the T's unless they really fancy some isolation and suicide. Yakinda now. He's been aggressive in some different positions. We've seen him on uh, through through dig and so on where James gets a kill onto Carrigan. Now we find him making forward plays on the ramp as well. So uh, FaZe Clan uh, facing a Virtus Pro, which is getting stronger and stronger here on Ancients. Yeah. Yeah, they bounce back a lot more quickly than the first map. Good cover there from James. Keeps his teammate alive. Yakinda in a good spot too. Gets the better of Twist. And just like that, there's now almost nothing left for FaZe in this one. Of course, it was a safe round, so can't be expecting too much. Oh, good shot from all of my say. He's found himself a second as well. And just like that, two versus two. And this is a little scary. There's 50 seconds to play with. Oh, Olive had an opportunity there, James. Very quick to the punch, though. Now he's broke. He's picked up the, the bomb. This is going to have to be a, a really, <laughs> really nice shot from Brokey to make this one work. Yeah, he's got to full commit to this. Get the bonus money at least. And Jame will immediately remove him, as Jame often does. But um, that is a great round for Face Clan on an eco. Three kills and a bomb plant. You can't, you, you, you can't ask for much more than that. You know, that's, that's, that's really, really good for sure. And it should set them up to... We're going to see how the how things go with the money from VP uh, once they've you know fully rebought here, but you know that, that's going to help set themselves up to force VP to an eco a bit sooner than otherwise. You know, presuming that they're able to start winning rounds again. So we'll see if that's the case. I wonder if we'll see a change of approach here. It'd be good to see Phase you know dominating mids. That's been a really important point of control for Virtus Pro, and they've been holding on to it quite well so far in the last few rounds. The double ops seem to be problematic, actually, for FaZe right now. I wonder if we'll see them going back to the to some of the A pushes that they were doing earlier on in the half. Twist from Canada. Now living in Europe, he's a welcome immigrant to our continents. This FaZe clan squad. Three AWPs on the server, as Dan mentioned. There are two on the Virtus Pro side for round number 13. And Kicker will be over towards the donut once again. If you're ever in LA, I would recommend Randy's Donuts in Inglewood. And DK's Donuts. Well then, let's see what else Virtus Pro have in them. No strangers to doing things the hard way. They lost their pick of Mirage to face clan. Pips at the post. No mid control this round from VP. They, there was some early pressure around the A main position from FaZe, but Virtus Pro don't seem all too concerned. Deep smokes there for that mid control, which is now coming in. So positionally speaking, FaZe are in a qu quite a good spot at the moment. And you can see that Flit is asking some questions of mid, rotating around, making sure that there's no creep, as Carrigan often <laughs> likes to creep up through that position. Twist is getting pretty deep now as well. He's going to hear the rotation from the A site. Oh, boy. That is a, a big help, and that's an even bigger one. FaZe Clan used almost all their utility for the initial map control, but catching these rotations has decimated Virtus Pro in round number 13. That is something they'll have to think twice about. You don't get to rotate for free if you give up mid. Yeah, yeah, it was quite an urgent rotation as well, and FaZe hadn't yet triggered the push into the B site. So perhaps, you know, arguably a premature rotation, whatever you want to say, it was capitalized upon by FaZe with that mid control. So really well done to to kind of win that. And uh, again, VP, in a lot of these previous rounds where they've been successful, it's come off of the back of that initial mid control. So, you know, they gave it up in this round. They, they opted for a different approach. Perhaps they expected a rush and it did not benefit them. So might expect to see them go back to that mid control. And Buster looking to hold on to this orb. Not going to happen. Rain will remove that forcibly. So 7-2-6 phase back in the lead once again. James got $9,000, and that's important. 
uh, whether they buy now or the next round because um, he's got 14 kills. You know, there's a good average of the kills on the FaZe Clan. They've got an average of about nine kills um, per person, but James definitely is stand out with 14 kills for his team. No one else has even got 10. The AWP has been very important. And there's a lot of tight angles where you can get a, a cheap kill at close range and just disappear and post up on a different angle again. So it's very, very much in his favor, things like that, when, when you have the luxury of the CT angles taking place by surprise from position to position. It must be quite fun. Mm. Flitz, he, he secured that mid control this time for VP. Oh, oh no, the t he's alive somehow though. Yakindar's still alive and his teammate might be able to help support him. Smoking out that molly to try to have the ability to support. But Yakindar stuck in this corner. What does FaZe want to do about this? They can't really push without it being a massive gamble. So he might just be able to live there. What a strange situation. Smokes on both sides, but there could potentially be a one way. The one on the right hand side. I didn't see too much of it and Buster is indeed here. And maybe they're trying to take advantage of the, of the players being out of position, but Rain gets caught there somehow after the smokes dissipate, which is, I don't, it's kind of confusing. I'm yeah. sure they heard the smoke on the right hand side, and then he had to smoke himself on the left hand oh, side. But look at this, Carrigan has managed to find his way once again into a very deep position, looking to go towards the backstab through Temple, even in spawn. His teammates reset into the A, pu the, the A push, and Carrigan, he's about to pull a very nasty surprise over Jame. Br bring out the knife. Oh, it's, it's gonna be just the one shot. He's picked up the AWP. Does that, just, is that gonna do in the round? Oh, the whip though from Carrigan. Opportunity now because of that frag from Yakinda. They must be so frustrated the kind of kills Carrigan's got in this round. Twist, no traces, but still able to punish. Flick got instinct there. And now they've got a bomb to defuse. Three on three, you can hear the beeps. Yakindar very close again, just running distraction as Kicker tries to capitalize. Twister King to swing, Buster gets deleted. Maybe not expecting Kicker, but he'll deal with him as well. And Ooh. as I said, Twist is the man for the multi frags for FaZe Clan. When you need him, he's there. Was that Eight. an ace, James? He's killing everyone. He may, he may. Oh, well it had done. to be four because Carrigan didn't Carrigan get there yeah, one yeah, tap. Yeah, he killed yeah. James, yeah. So four K I thought I missed twist. an ace, Dan. What are you doing to me? <laughs> it's close enough. Look at this guy go, absolutely decimating. His opponents in this round. Nice stuff there from Twist. And even, again, Carrigan with these pushes. It, it, time and again, it's just, it just catches off VP. It was so perfect, too, because his teammates were resetting into the A push. And they needed something extra. And Carrigan gives the something extra. Absolutely, yeah. And VP, they don't have any money for this last round. Carrigan's a Trojan horse in this game. And again, we've got an aggressive presence from Versus Pro, but... They are less equipped than they were previously. Oh, Rain. I think we're all learning our angles here on Ancient as these games continue and there's more and more experience. And James is caught with a grenade in his hand. Not often you see that happen. Kicker again will uh, find something from this angle. And there's something that they need. Man advantage. They've got two AK-47s now versus Pro. So definitely an upgraded situation for them more favorable than before despite the lost play up see if they look for a boost over that smoke or something would be risky from that close to the smoke but they'll try it anyway why not in a round such as this checking the left hand side but it is costly oh. twist takes out both so far and oh there he is God. again he's twist. all over the place twist is just beasting people 16 kills many towards the end in the last two rounds I wonder if we'll be able to get a look at those last kills from Twist. <laughs> Savage stuff. Looks pretty doable for VP, 4v3, but a, a strong finish from FaZe after, I think, you know, the round started to become somewhat questionable. Oh, I see. Beautiful. There it is, the backstab. Lovely stuff. But yeah, it started to be somewhat questionable after, you know, FaZe lost momentum as to whether or not they'd be able to bring it back again, and they suddenly do. It's 9-6 to six at the end of the first half. They'll be feeling good about that. And again, if you're just joining us, for this best of three, FaZe narrowly won the first map. 16 to 14, it was Mirage. If there is a way back for VP, and if they win Ancient, we'll be moving to Dust 2 as the decider for this series. But right now, it's feeling like FaZe have that extra oomph to them that might just carry them over here on Ancient. And I think Carrigan is is really... There's a lot to be, lot to be said, I think, for Carrigan in terms of the calls, but more importantly, some of those mid-round mid pushes to spawn 
that's that's really created problems for Virtus Pro. You would think it would be a relief that Virtus Pro finished with that half with the sheer amount of flanks we had, but they don't look relieved if you look at their faces. Somebody must be talking on the team, I would hope, because we saw a lot of um, pursed lips and silent faces there. And that does not bode well for Versus Pro, who may feel a little out of their depth versus yeah. the the sheer recklessness of FaZe Clan on Ancient. Yeah, they did a great job. And I'm, I, I mean, very curious again in terms of stylistically what's going to happen on this map. I feel, I feel like there's lots of unknowns as, as teams will have different preferences and as the meta will eventually solidify. It, it took a long time, actually, when Nuke was, was redone for teams to adopt it and really start to figure it out. So, but, you know, and, and it was a long time when it was being played and there wasn't really any teams that were really focusing on it for quite some time. And so there's certainly lots left to be discovered on a map that is as new as ancient. And Olive looking quite stoic at the moment. Yeah, just reserving that energy. Hello, watch, watch aficionado. There are many, actually. There are many secret ones of the players Yeah. in the DMs. Again, those... Uh, what are those things called again? Hand warmers? Hot hands. Hot hands. I think that's a brand name. Yeah. So for, for people at home who don't know what they are, that just basically um, has heat to make your hands a bit warmer. Yeah, some chemicals in there, and if, as you move it around and and uh, the little crystals make contact with each other, it generates heat. It's like a micro reactor. And I mean, for me, it doesn't; those don't help very much. But it is kind of. I it's, guess a bit, nice it's a bit placebo-y for me. It's I don't know. Yeah, it just it's. Uh, I feel like it doesn't help an enormous amount. I it's don't not, know. It's not that deep warmth. No, you, you need a, we need a steam room at pro events so because then you'll be radiating heat for like two yeah. hours afterwards well you know as well when you're getting stressed out it is going to also impact sort of the, your internal temperatures regardless of the external temperatures that was rude because if it was pretty rude oh my Why god like picking up off the floor yeah <laughs> it's like what's this like power dynamic that's happening right now it's like oh, he's pointing at it in all sorts it's like a scene from oz it's like trying to prove a point pick it up for me look at that full-size keyboard man these are things that are past people. Unless you're an accountant, you don't yeah. need no full-size keyboard yet. Uh, just a quick side note. Um, I did a podcast with Rafa recently. For those who don't know, he's one of the most legendary champions in esports of all time. He's been winning championships for a decade in Quake in very competitive eras, and he's still doing it. And uh, so one of the most experienced tournament competitors that we have. And I talked to him a lot about pressure and stuff and he made this really interesting point actually which i'd never thought about it's a really simple one he was talking about how you know you don't tend to breathe very effectively when you're competing because your a natural response when there's lots of uh, intensity in the game is to your breathing kind of you start holding your breathing or breathing gets more yeah. shallow and he was saying how you know it's it sounds obvious but you need to breathe in those intense moments because otherwise it can really kind of knock off kilter your internal sort of physiology uh, if, if you're not getting a proper flow of oxygen and you're having those, like, these like really up and down moments. So, and again, just like, like we're saying, when you're getting really stressed out, there's like a physiological response in your body. Yep. Maybe that's going to make your hands cold and clammy. Um, maybe it's going to just, you're just going to feel generally a bit more kind of nervous and that nervous energy might not be very uh, you know helpful for you when you're like holding angles and trying to hold your, hold these positions and trying to focus. There's a there's an Apex player, uh, a professional Apex player who, because it, in that game people stream um, when they're playing in tournaments, yeah. and he wears a heart rate monitor. I think he plays for Esports Arena, if I'm not mistaken, um, which, which is quite interesting. It'd be cool to to um, to learn more about like that kind of like physiology changes and and heart rate type stuff yeah. when things get <laughs> a little serious. I felt like Olaf Meister looking into my soul and was disappointed. <laughs> For a second there, when he peeks like, into the up. camera, yeah. <clears throat> See, I think one player needs to log back into to the old Steam. Man, you know my Steam account is older than some people who are playing professionally, Counter Strike yeah. professionally. Yeah. yeah, but I remember the 
I feel like those those players missed out on the original days of Steam where it would be down all the time. And oh, the, sounds, the sounds like UI, a lot. <laughs> the U, the UI was absolutely it was super basic. Pretty it was like basic, MS yeah. Paint here almost. Well, I remember Friends was down all the time. Yeah, Friends was basically was always down. useless. Yeah, which was really annoying. I do miss the old sounds though. Da -da -da -da. Yeah, they 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 definitely fix a lot of problems. Me and my mates were, were like when Steam was originally released, we were just on the website just trying to download it as fast as possible because obviously before that you had the one servers and all your IDs and so on. But we we wanted to get super low IDs, so we were like <laughs> I think yeah. a lot of people were doing that, so I think the launch of Steam was delayed by two days because the servers just kept crashing because yeah. so many people were trying to, to download it. But when we eventually did, I got the Steam ID 1197. That's pretty legit. Yeah, and my mate got one that was lower than mine, the bastard. Mm. I think his one was 10 something something. You know what's interesting is that like, you know, because that's obviously worth money, a lot of money, because there's people that would pay for like a really low ditch Steam account. It's mm. it's like an NFT effectively because it's obviously only one in existence, and so and you own that and it's very valuable to certain people to, well, collect, I think to collectors and so on. I want to say SF, the French player who was banned. I, th I think he was banned, right? SF. I think so. One of those players uh, had bought <laughs> an account that, that, that was like <laughs> yeah, one of those banned <laughs> French players <laughs> bought an account that was like thirty something Steam ID. Wow. And I was like, wow. I thought those would all be with like staff or something. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. That's impressive. That is very <coughs> impressive. Yeah, it's pretty cool, some of the history there. Um, but at the same time, you said they're missing out, but at the same time, like, you know, for people like me that were, like, competing in sort of the earlier generations, we feel like, you know, it's, it feels like we're missing out on getting paid salaries to do that. <laughs> you know, getting, <laughs> getting you know, it being po possibly a real job. Because back then as well, you'd have to really be especially in in quake you'd have to be a legitimate top three contender at every tournament to like really make a living from it from it that's that's good all right carrigan oh this is uh this feels personal what a, what a considering moment. the size of our screen here i don't know how i feel about this <laughs> i used to play day of defeat competitively not professionally but competitively enemy down ladders that game was awesome i never played the source version though but when, but but in those days in CS, I was just running around on Aztec with a Deagle and a Scout like an idiot, yeah. and I had an Intelli mouse and no mouse pad. So when my mates and I we hired a hall in Blackpool, I think in two thousand and one, and I went to the land there, and uh, my sensitivity was completely different. It was like four times as high because the table was different, and I had no mouse pad. <laughs> And then I thought people would think I was cheating because I thought my aim was all right, but obviously I couldn't do anything because I had no bloody mouse pad, so I had no yeah. consistency. Complete disaster. Well, that's the thing. Like, go back to that that Rafa podcast. It's like th we talked about a lot of stuff about like tournaments, lessons learned, and you learned a you learn a lot of lessons playing tournaments. Like, it's uh, I mean, maybe we can go back into this later because it is interesting to talk about. Um, but we're back into the match. So a second half, we'll resume here Whoa! between VP and Phase. Look at those odds. That's crazy. Those odds are insane, that man. There's, there's quite... three rounds between them, yeah. and you haven't seen the pistol. Like, has somebody like sat on the keyboard or something? That, what the hell are those odds? That is a good point. That is an opportunity for certain people, for sure. Yeah. Well, here we go. Oh, hello. Rain! Popping their heads. We know that he. this is how he does it with these pistols. The USP is still ready to go. And, I mean, maybe the best has come and gone, but he's certainly stopped them here. He's got his teammate there ready for support as well. You can just try to find an angle for a Molotov, but how are you going to do that without getting shot on the head? I don't think that's happening on this occasion. And that's not a good sign, I don't feel like. Oh, very boy. Very nice, very nice. Increase the odds. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I think there's a lot of insane rain pistol clips, but I think that P251 from, from E-League. Yeah. Um, I think it was an E-League major. I think Boston. It was E-League really something. E-League something. That that's probably that takes the cake from Arch side with the P250. If you know, you know. And share it with your friends. I want to see 10, 10 point something. 10.7. I want to see. Although, if that, if that now appears, is that like fixing odds or something? <laughs> Hopefully it doesn't appear. I don't know. I feel like you're walking into dangerous territory here. So we'll... Uh... All right, Flint. You got this. There we go. 
Oh, okay. Find Just, himself a dirty uh -oh. angle. Here he comes. Here he comes. There's one. There's two. And Ooh. another one to be had. The I jumping think Twist accuracy. is smurfing. Are we going to see a 30 bomb from him? He's just made it to 20. He is starting to frag everybody. It's great. It's great to see. Powering well, there, up. there's a lack of respect already established by FaZe Clan, and we're not even talking about Carrigan yet because you know it's going to come. Yeah. For sure. So we're into round 18. Jame has 14 kills. Yukinda, 10. The rest of the squad on uh, single digits, although the same is true for Olaf Meister and Carrigan. Which is, I mean, talk about the impact frags from Carrigan, though, right? Definitely doesn't tell the whole story. That's why if you look at scoreboard and not the actual match, you cannot have a relevant opinion. Mm. Well, a couple MP9s, FAMAS. Certainly not the worst situation in the world, but uh, for FaZe there against these AKs, if they can find some of those closer ranges, they can make this bonus work out nicely for themselves. Kika with that mid positioning, as he may pressuring that B site. And Twist able to defend against Kika in mid. That's a great frag to get because, you know, if, if Kika's teammates were able to to get some kills and pull, they would be able to pull Twist away from that and he could flank. But oh my god, Carrigan's through the smoke with the MP9. You love to see it. I told you, there's no respect on the way. We saw it from Twist, but the, the main BS is coming from Carrigan, and there it is. And that's good because. At that point, that psychological warfare, to do stuff like that, just ridiculous level stuff, that psychological warfare, that is going to make it harder for your opponent to play their proper game because you're, you're, you're just taking liberties at this point. And with the MP9 too, you're getting a good engagement with it and you, you want to get that in where you can. And going one for one is huge here. But with that, it's another good spot for an MP9, Olaf delivering the 2K, leaving just Jame here and very little to be done. Mate, this is looking dry like Biltong for Jamie versus Han. Pro. Yes. Yep, it's definitely quite difficult. What do you think of these hand wraps? All right. It's very nice. I appreciate the effort there from the <laughs> <laughs> from the observer. Hey, it, like. it is hard to to go forward in third person like that it's not difficult to edge forward but uh yeah i don't know i don't know what combo what loadout i have of those i'm gonna give that a 10 out of 10 <laughs> observer inspection with the tools that are available to him yeah i'd say so face clan now have double the score of virtus pro and we haven't really seen anything from them in this half just yet and uh they will soon be i mean let's this is essentially nico round for them so they've got like, if they keep losing rounds, they've got two buy rounds left yeah. with which to show us something. And let's see, if FaZe Clan choose to be in control during that time, then that's going to be a problem. Rain very aware of uh, potential play there, and Yakinda will be denied. Now, Jame is the man with the AK-47, but have Virtus Pro got the stripes to make a round like this work? They're very capable of these hero rifle, be it sniper or otherwise, these hero rifle rounds. Um... You know, where you, where you can squeeze an advantage versus pro are very capable of, of doing that. Yeah. But on Ancient, I don't know if they've got the stripes, if they've got the reps. Yeah, definitely. It's a great maneuver early from Rain as well to, like, bait a punish. Like, he, he set up a trap to think that he could get punished, and then he punishes the punish attempt. And with that, uh, you know, reset back to this B push for Vadis Pro. Phase are in pretty good spots here overall. Reigns in a quite controlled position. Probably gets two if they would challenge this, but they may be trying to put all of the, the numbers, all of the bodies towards the site proper, up the ramp into that B site for the plant. Rain is going to find probably a timing here. Indeed, he's found it. Oh, hello. Uh, what? Well, he's got support as well. Carrigan's there. Just <laughs> come out of nowhere. And Olaf is just, I believe, sitting in ruins trying to see what he can get done. Buster defending the flank for now. But still, Olaf and Rain in a good position around the ruins to keep the pressure up. Maybe it's a question of damage. We've seen one be force one already though, yesterday, but we won't see one in this round. FaZe Clan moves to 13. They have three players surviving and they've all got AK-47s. Well, they want to be switched out for the AWP, but that's always a big indicator of success, the amount of AKs that the CT side have. Yeah. 
And uh, that bomb plant will actually give Virtus Pro that extra buy round. James on the AWP. Oh, this is well, this was a buy round for them anyway, of course. But um, that will certainly help with the grenades. Otherwise, they'd be in a lot of trouble. We'll see if they choose to the smoke mid or what they opt for. Yeah, there's the mid smoke deployed immediately. But Carrigan will go straight through it. And I, I think the mid smoke missed. Was it for the uh, no? It's for the um, for donut position. It is a fast play into the B bomb site. They have swarm. They're going very deep indeed. We have an initial exchange. We have a nice spray from rain, and we've got a flank. Twist putting in work again. Twist with the multi frag. Twist with the USP. Twist all day. Twist in your face. Yep, it's <laughs> he's uh, certainly pulling out quite a performance here on Ancient. And Twenty six. It's yeah, he's closing in. He's closing in on the thirty bomb, and it's it's tough. It's a real tough one for Virtus Pro. It's certainly looking uh, a little bit flat on the second half, and they really struggled in the first half too. Phase looking way more prepared. I mean, we saw you know statistically that it's it's the stats suggested that Phase had more experience playing this, and therefore would have more confidence and a bit more of a playbook. I don't know if that's necessarily the case, but so far it is kind of playing out in that way. And well, let's not forget the strong identity they had with Sanji and uh, yeah, the very recent replacement with Flit. Like for, uh, for for the more technical plays, that is such a big difference to make up for in a very short space of time. At a major, no less. It's a risk. Yeah. And mid control was just won by Carrigan there. Good swing off of the flashbang from a teammate and a quick and, a quick and early five versus four in favor of FaZe. Kindar chasing down the kill on B. Can he manage to make it happen? No, denied. And the smoke will force him back. So they're struggling to find a way in, looking for some kind of edge, but it's just not availing itself to them. We'll see if James can be the availer in this four versus five. What does that mean, though? It's going to throw an event and not pay people and they're like what was you oh god that <laughs> uh. sub one minute mark james lines up the donut smoke and phase kind will chill for now however there is nobody on this a bomb site and they can see the grenades surely twist see those grenades yeah we can see the rotation start to come through from carrigan at the very least and there'll be an execute onto the a bomb site so Seems that FaZe Clan have looked to play retake here. They have grenades on Brokey only. Close, but not quite. Nikinda will be able to plant the bomb, taking some damage late, but he's still alive. Carrying a, oh, he's finding his way through the smoke. Once again, just finding these surprising timings to catch off his opponents. And it's going to work out there for that initial kill. The trade comes through from Jame. Still much more to be done here as Yakinda. Oh, turning away. Uh, it's turning back to the angle, and Rain's still going to win the battle. Jame. Delivering for the team, though. Trying to hold this down. In comes all three players. There's the whip. Buster is down to you, but Brokey will be able to trade him out. And that is the defuse there for FaZe. 15 rounds. FaZe looking great. Yeah, I'm starting to wonder about the veto at this point. Because this is looking very, very rough indeed for versus yeah. Pro. It's looking like it was the case. We didn't necessarily know it, but it's looking like it's the case that they needed to win map one. Oh, for sure. Like, I, I, I wasn't sure if that was going to be the case, but that's that's re it's revealed itself to us, that information now. Um, I didn't realize that there would have been this kind of disparity. It's playing really good here on this Ancient so far. Another big battle on mid and another wi uh, victory for FaZe. Oh, they're hitting everything right now. And oh, man, I was going to say send and twist, but he uh, may be trying to get that 30 bomb. Hasn't been successful in the uh, recent rounds. He will maybe end on 27 as it is Buster versus the world here. And there it is. Brokey to finish off the job.